Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. All right, we are still live. So, as the um, the title of this video suggests, and for this stream, the topic will be basic training, getting an idea of anything and everything you need to know about Unreal Engine 4 and getting started. Okay. And we're going to take a look at this from a very basic point of view. And going to try to hold questions. If you've got them, if they pertain to what's actually going on, go ahead and throw it in there. But, uh, sorry, let's get started with this. I'm assuming you've already got Unreal Engine 4 installed. And it doesn't matter how many projects you have created, we're going to ignore that and how many assets you have. No, it's going to matter for right now. So, once you've got it installed, and you've got the engine and version installed that you want, you can either click here or here, and go ahead and launch into it. What you're going to get is it will pop up with the starting point we're going to work with. So, we're going to create a new project, and it's going to be blank. Blank. Now, as you're creating your new project, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> You can choose first person, and that is going to be a first person shooter template. It's going to provide you with a basic gun and the ability to shoot things, and that's nice. If you're doing multiplayer, then maybe this isn't the best way to go, because what you have is a gun floating in the air and a pair of arms. You don't have a full body, so you're going to have to do some creative um, coding to be able to get it to where you have a physical body and as you're playing you're just the arms but you see everybody else as a full character and yeah we won't get into that um, if you're gonna do multiplayer first person is probably not the best way to go to get started with flying okay just as it suggests here um, the ability to fly around and yeah handheld AR something for more advanced users extremely awesome in display yeah, same thing Puzzled, you can create little puzzle games, rolling, so forth. Feel free to do these and, and try these on your own. The most common you're going to run into is third person because you have a full mannequin. And if you're going to start off trying to create a multiplayer game, it's probably the best way to go. But for this example, I'm just going to stick with blank and everything is going to be blueprint based. I am not doing C. I will only be doing blueprint videos. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and Make sure that this is defaulted to where it is here. Um, desktop and console, because that's what we're developing for. Maximum quality, and I'm starting with no starter content. If you already have it pre-selected, go ahead and unselect it by clicking on the box and select no starter content. So if you want to follow along with this, then feel free. I'm just going to call this training and create project. So now we don't need this guy anymore. It's going to go ahead and create a whole blank new project for us to get started with. And the main focus of what we're going to do for right now is cover the anatomy of Unreal Engine 4 and what it is and what it'd be like. So this is your introductory entry level map. It's not saved. There's nothing special about it. The first thing that I always do is click right here next to the word filters. And that's going to open up my content browser in a way that I, I can find things. If I click here, I can see what's in here, plus you'll also see a folder breakdown. It's a nice drink of choice, coffee. Tonight's drink of choice, sweet tea. Yes, I'm drinking both. Okay, so the content browser. This is, again, where you're going to find your folders, and currently we don't have any. We'll come back to it as we start populating it with stuff. Same thing with here. When you click on a folder here, it'll show the content of the folder here. All right, so this is going to be an important area where you're going to be dragging things into your map, dragging blueprints into your map, things of that nature. Now, on the left-hand side, this is the modes window. And again, I'm going through all of this for a specific reason. I love helping people. I love helping people learn how to do things with Unreal Engine 4. And whenever I tell somebody, okay, look in your modes panel or look in your world outliner or details panel, 
I, I don't want to have to know. It's the thing over there. No, go left. I don't want to have to guide your mouse where you need to click. This is the modes window. This right here. So as you can see, as we move our mouse around, we can actually reposition and resize all our different windows. I'm just going to leave mine the way that they are for now. In fact, I'm going to slide this one over a little bit more because I want to see more of here instead of here. So in your modes panel, you have recently placed. So if you've already placed something in the, in the level, it'll be right here. So you can just quickly grab it from there. Basic. You have an empty actor. This really isn't used all that much. Um, older versions of the engine, you could use this as a way of creating blueprints and stuff like that, but it's just too much extra work involved. Same thing with empty character, almost never used, so you can pretty much ignore these. Same thing with empty pawn. Point light, all you'd have to do is just left click and drag these things into your map. Point light is just what it says. It's a point of light that you can put into your map. You get a little graphical icon of a light bulb, but there is no physical entity inside your map. It is just a light source. Player start, just as it says, that's a player start. A default map already comes with a player start inside of it, so we'll go ahead and keep that. And for right now during the video, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the video because I'm going to be showing things in the upper right hand corner, and I don't want you guys to be distracted by my beautiful face. Shut up. My mommy tells me I'm beautiful all the time. She has been known to lie a little bit too, but anyway, um, so yeah, as you're scrolling through here, things like a cube, you can drag it in here. If I don't want it in here, I can just click on it and hit the delete key. Or if I place it in here and I just want to get rid of it, I can do control Z and it'll undo the last thing that I did. Again, a sphere, cylinder, cone, these are basic shapes. A plane is a basically it's what you see there, but it's see-through on the other side. It's a basically one-dimensional plane, or two-dimensional plane, however you want to look at it. A box trigger, really not going to use these much because you really want to tie these in with a blueprint so you can actually have them tied directly in so you're not putting it into your blueprint for your map. Um, and a sphere trigger, same basic thing. Now, if you just want a light, you can go to lights. You have a directional light, point light, spotlight, rectangular light, and skylight. By default, whenever you first start the editor, you already have atmospheric fog, a floor you can stand on, a light source, a player start, a sphere, skylight, and reflection capture. But we're going to ignore all this stuff and come back to this section in a little bit. So if you want to bring these lights in, a spotlight is, well, just that, a spotlight. You can drag it in here, and you can manipulate the values with it, like the, the cone radius of it. You can do all that from over here. But, again, we just want to cover what's all available inside the modes panel. Cinematic, things you need for camera rigging for your cinematics. Visual effects, post-processing, uh, things of that nature. Okay. Geometries. Now, this is something that I use quite often when building a level, and you can actually drag these in here, and I'll cover BSP geometries later on, but these are my most common building blocks as opposed to the basic building blocks, and I'll show why later. So that's going to be in geometry. If you want a set of stairs, no problem. There's your stairs. And to move around in this view, I right-click with my mouse, and I can rotate around, and then I can use my WASD keys to actually fly around the map. So putting in stairs is just that easy. You can add amount of stairs and so forth. But again, we'll cover that more in the BSP part of the video. Volumes, things that you're going to come into that are handy. A blocking volume is just that. It blocks. You place this into your map, and you can actually use your transform tools up here to stretch it and change its shape and actually use this as a method of blocking a player from being able to get through and that's going to be handy if your map has open sections like this where you could fall off the world and falling out of the world is no bueno you don't want to do that so a blocking volume is how you can protect your players from getting somewhere or falling through somewhere or going where you don't want them to go 
Same thing for camera blocking would be for cameras. Cold distance, we'll get into that later. Kill Z volume, you can actually apply this where you want it as a spot where if a player goes in there, it's like if they, they fell out of the world, you could use this similar to, to kill your player. Level streaming, awesome stuff, get into that later. Um, light mass character, light mass importance. Another really important one you're going to need to know about is a nav mesh bounds, but you also have a pain causing volume. Experiment with these. Um, a lot of fun stuff you can do with these, but the more popular ones you're going to use pretty regular, or at least that I do, is a nav mesh bounds and a blocking volume are the two that I use the most in here. So blocking volume here and uh, light mass importance is going to be something you're going to need for your maps later on. But the nav mesh bounds and blocking volume are the two most important ones that I use. And then all classes, it's got everything here. And with any of these, you can go into a search block and like, okay, I want a physics thruster or physics constraint, or you just start typing in what you want. And it's an intelligent search system, so it's really good to work with. So that's the normal, normal portion of your modes. And that is on the placement portion. The next one over is paint. This is where you're going to be able to paint things directly on your map and things like that. We'll worry about getting into that later on. Landscape. Okay, this is another important one here. If you don't want to just place that little floor there, you want an actual landscape. You can actually place your landscape into your map, and this is your navigatable area. And you can change things like the number of components. It can be one, and there you go. It's one component wide by eight components long and you can break down these components and the basic resolution of your your level or quads and so forth by the number of squares going across but to keep it simple I, I like to go with like one by one or two by two when you're building a test map start simple and work your way up so doing your managing portion once you've already got your terrain you could also use import from file if you want to bring in a, a um, height map and create a, a fancy terrain that way. Again, subject for another video. But I'm not going to put that down. Now, foliage editor. That's something for another day as well. You can use this. You can attach trees to your foliage um, brush or grass or other things in there and simply just paint into your world trees or bushes or grass you can just paint foliage on and it populates it and you can do the separation of how far they are apart how many are within your brush circle things like that really cool tool this is geometry editing we will cover this more when we do the BSP geometry portion this I have a lot of fun with from time to time as well but primarily you can be doing a lot with this right here more than anything else whatever you're just doing normal stuff so that is your modes panel. If I say, okay, look in your modes panel and drag in a point light. There we go. We just dragged in a point light. Um, we covered the content browser. And there's a lot of things you can do with the content browser. If you want to add a new folder in here, you can right click in this panel and create a new folder. And just type in a name. And there you go. So now I'm in here in the root of my content folder. So if I say go to the root of the content folder, it's right here, and that will show you all the folders you have in here. So that's how I could create a new folder in here by just right clicking and add new folder. But you could also hit add new and new folder. Space is not allowed. So underscores, like um, another underscore folder is a good way to add a space in there so you can get some separation in your text. Um, so there I've just created another folder and I can also come over here in this area right click add a new folder and another folder. So either way works you got those three different options for creating new folders and you can just double click on it. If you left click on it one time it's going to show but if there's other stuff inside that folder you can expand it out. So that's the basics. 
Now, you can't drag and create a selection box, but you can left click and shift left click or left click and control left click to select which folders you want to activate. In this case, I'm going to delete all three of them. Just hit the delete key and delete and there they go. So that's pretty much the basics of here. If you're wanting to import new FBX files or other files, you would just click on import. It'll bring up your, your import um, file browser, find them and import them that way. Um, that's one way of getting files directly in here. Save all is a button you're going to see quite often. I'm not going to save this right now because another tip you're going to want to know for later on, when you start saving things and building your content, building a good, clean, organized system is a very important thing. So if you want to save your map somewhere, go ahead and create a new folder called Maps. This will be important down the line to have a folder called Maps. So now, I'm already in this folder, so now if I do Save All one more time, I can Save Selected, and I'm going to double click there to select my map folder. And I'm going to give this a name, and this will be test um, map. So now we've saved it. And there's one thing that I tell everybody to do, and that's go over here to the edit up top. And then go into your editor preferences. And there's two things that I change all the time. And I go in here and I select default, where it says asset editor open location. And I select the main window. That's going to anchor it up top so you can get your blueprint full screen. The next thing I do is I come over here to loading and saving and I find enable autosave and I uncheck it. Well, wouldn't you want autosave to work? Because that's like, oh, well, it'll automatically save and back up. No, no, no. You should be responsible for your own backing up and your own saving. You need to hit that save all button often. So there, I just manually saved and I'm going to do something and then I'm going to go back over here and hit save all. I hit that save all button as surprised there's not a worn out section on the monitor where the save all button is because I hit that very often. Save current is only going to apply towards the map. Save all is going to save all. So get used to hitting save all pretty regular. Okay, so that's moving on from the content browser. This is the world outliner on the right hand, top right hand corner of your, your screen. If you do not have the world outliner for some reason, come over here to window, left click on that, come down to where you see world outliner and click next to it so that it actually shows up and you have your world outliner. This is an important thing to know when you're putting things into your map. Another important thing to do that most people neglect to do, but is highly recommended, is you get into the habit of being organized here and being organized here. So, you can left click on your, your top item, which is your map itself, then you can right click on it and you can go to create folder, and now I'm going to create a folder called um, map stuff. And I'm going to grab everything that's in here by clicking the left mouse button here on, on the top and then shift left click on the bottom so that I have all of these selected. And now I can manually drag them up and with my left mouse button and let go on top of map stuff and now they're all in this folder. I can now minimize that folder with a little arrow here and now this is nice and clean in the upper right hand corner in your world outliner. Clean up your world outliner be organized here because if you're building a city and you're like okay I need just street sections bam click on that and it shows all your street sections because you've organized it as you go create a bunch of stuff throw it in there save all so that's your world outliner this is where all the little stuff in your map is going to be displayed here you have a details panel so if I click on the floor I get basic details like the elevation. I want to change the Z, which is the up and down. I'm going to change that to zero. As soon as I did that, it's going to tell me that lighting needs to be rebuilt. Okay, no problem, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. We made a change to our map. Hit save all. Get yourself into the habit. Save all, save all, save all. 
Now you also have world settings. This is where you're going to set things like your game mode and the overall settings of your, your map. Like um, for this, it's the world settings for the individual item. It's not used as much, but it is something to think about and something to look into as needed. But this is your world settings and this is your details panel for the main editor window. So if I say go into your details panel and we're in this view, then this is what I mean. Just click on this tab to make sure you're in the details panel because now you have scale information and so forth. So that is that. Now it's telling us we need to build our lighting. So that means we can go ahead and look at these buttons and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at these buttons. So save current is going to refer to just our map. Source control I have never once used in two years of doing this stuff. Content, never used. Marketplace, never used that button. Settings, never used it. Blueprints, if we click here it's going to allow us to new empty blueprint class. That's one way of creating a blueprint. I never use that. Open blueprint class, never once used it. Or anything. The only thing I've ever used in this whole thing is open level blueprint and this is the blueprint for the actual map itself. It is necessary to sometimes save things directly into your map, but you can see as soon as we open up the blueprint, it's now anchored it to the top. So we have a full screen and we'll get back into blueprint shortly. Um, cinematics, if you're doing cinematic stuff, you have the option to do that. I don't do a whole lot, but you know, we'll worry about that later. If you click this, it's gonna build your map. And if you click this, you can select what you wanna build. The primary ones that I use is build lighting only, or the first time I do it, I'll do a build by just hitting build. It'll go through build status. Swarm connection is actually a sync connection with Epic Games. The window pops up automatically, tells you it's building lighting, and because we have next to nothing in our map, it was really quick. Larger the map, the longer it's gonna to take to, do, and the more things are in it, the longer it's gonna to take to, to build. All right, so zero errors, zero warnings. Took 80.8 .8 milliseconds to do. Lovely. So the next one over is play. If we hit play, currently we don't have a character. We have, a, I have a mouse cursor in my window. I hate it. I'll show you how to get rid of that. But now I can left click in my map. We don't have a character. We have no body, no legs, nothing. So we can fly around and we're just a camera that floats in space. We're just, you know, there. We don't have a character. We have nothing. You can hit the escape key and it will stop playing and there you go. Sometimes I'll say, we'll play it in a new window. So you click right here between play and launch and now you can select it to play in the preview window for mobile. But the ones that I use primarily are gonna be standard regular viewport or new editor window or new pie, and it's going to create a whole new window. This one, doing it this method, is great for whenever you're doing multiplayer testing and you're you're checking for your replication working. So again, you can hit escape and that'll go away. You also can do standalone game. This is important also when testing network features because neither the pie window or the selected viewport will actually allow you to um, uh, see the network features. Simulate, I don't really use you know, because standalone game does more than, than what this does so it, it's you know you can if you like but selected viewport, new pie window, pie is play in editor just so you know. So that's the three that I use selected viewport, new pie or standalone game. Launch not really necessary. Um, you can set launch features this way, whether you want to launch it as um, PC or a browser or whatever else. Most games are being developed on PC by most developers, so you will rarely use the, uh, the launch feature itself. You'll just use play and either of those three windows. Alright, so that's the basics. And if nobody has any questions, we're going to move right along into the basics of a blueprint. Okay, so 
we made changes to our map let's save all one more time and now we want a blueprint but we want a character we don't want to just be a body floating around and the easiest way to actually get a character for us to do anything with is to come over here to add new click on this big green button to add new go all the way to the very top add feature or content pack when you select that this window is going to come up and if you didn't pick first person flying puzzle rolling third person or whatever when you first started off you can now bring these in or say you're you're running a third person but you also want to have a vehicle you can then add that to what we're doing here if you want to add the starter content well it's a content pack come over here and select starter content and add to project for right now we're just going to do third person and we're going to add to project and it's done I know that it's done because I can see two folders for third person down here so I'm just gonna hit the X and close that window now we no longer need this map well we'll come back to it anyway but we've now got a new map in the new map folder of and all I did was double click on it to load the map now first things first we have a character here but we also have a player start here honestly I don't know why they still do that I'm gonna click on this guy here and I'm gonna delete him I don't want it at all if you want to get rid of this floating thing here select it you can see it's highlighted in yellow there and hit delete you don't want the third person text laying on the ground select it hit delete and now let's look at our, our world outliner and start closing down some of these little things here you see your folders you can close these folders down and for the most part this stuff is actually okay but I'm still gonna come over here to third person example map create a new folder and map stuff and I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna control left click on map stuff because we don't want it selected and now I'm gonna drag all these things and I'm gonna put them in the map stuff folder and now I can minimize it and there we go we've cleaned up our world outliner and save all now from now on I want my map to only ever come to this map when we first start up so the first thing I'm gonna do is then we go back here to edit go to project settings new window pops up now the first one description you can fill this out if you want to um, next one I'm going to look at is maps and modes game mode base we're going to go ahead and select third person game mode editor startup map is going to be our third person example map game default map I want to change that to third person example map and then it's automatically saved and hit X and close it if we hit play now we are here but again we have this mouse cursor and I'll show you the easy way of getting rid of that mouse cursor but now we can use our mouse to, to look around and our WASD controls for walking now we've got all the stuff we need to get started with a basic walking moving um, animated character all the animations are there for the basic functions to walk and jump so I'm gonna hit escape again and now to find that blueprint we can come in here and make changes to this but I highly recommend that you don't leave your default stuff alone and continue to be organized click on content go ahead and let's create a new folder and we're gonna call this characters plural because what if we want more characters and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a new folder called blueprints and I'm gonna go back to this third person BP blueprints folder and I'm gonna left click on here and I'm gonna drag it over to the blueprints folder and I'm gonna copy here this leaves my original intact in case I screw something up now I can go into my new blueprints folder and I'm gonna hit F2 while I have it selected and I'm gonna give it a new name I call mine player underscore base it's just what I've chose to use been using that for quite some time so now we have our own unique character 
And so that we are using our new character in here, we need to go to the world settings of the map. And that's right here, world settings, next to detail panels. If you don't have world settings, again, go to window and make sure that world settings is checked and now it'll be here. Now, game mode override. We want to go ahead and click that and select third person game mode. And then we can check this arrow right here to open up these options. Default pawn class. We want to change this by clicking on it and select our player underscore base. Now, every time we hit play, we're playing with our new character. So let's get rid of that mouse cursor. So now we can play with the character that we're working on. So hit escape. I'm going to double click on player base. And here is our blueprint for our character. Now, quick rundown of the features of a blueprint. Quickly, I'll go ahead and come down here, right click, type in event, begin, play. You can left click to drag and move these things around. And I just want to go ahead and put in set input mode to game only. And this is going to set my game mode to make sure that I can do this, get a reference to my get player controller. You'll learn these things pretty quick and easy. Then I'm going to drag from the return value out and I'm going to set show mouse cursor to false. And this is going to get rid of that mouse cursor because I have massive OCDs and I can't stand it. So back to this. This is our components box. If I say look in your components table, this is your components. You've got a big green uh, thing right up here that says components, add components. You've got your player base, you've got your capsule component, arrow component, and you can select these individually. And if you notice over here in this side, whenever you select something, you now have options available for that particular item all the way down. So we'll cover more of that here in just a moment. But this is your components panel. This is for selecting the components of your character or adding new components to your character. Also important to know. All right, and this is what I call, you know, this says my blueprints. This is more or less gonna be your function and variable area. So your blueprint section, just my blueprints. This is my blueprint section. Um, or my blueprint tab. It's just go to go to my blueprint. Go to my blueprint. It's going to be. I'm telling you to go over here, or create a variable. Um, you've got graphs. I sometimes use functions. I sometimes use macros. And eh, very seldom do I use variables. Is one of the most used things. And create a variable. Event dispatchers. I really never use that either. But variables. If you want to create a variable as you mouse over onto this darker colored bar there, you can see a variable tab. You would just select that with your left mouse button. Say, I want this variable to be, is, um, I want it to be health. Okay, now let's start simple with a Boolean. And okay, we want this is dead question mark. We're asking a question, essentially not we're asking a question here, but we're asking a yes or no and a, a boolean is a default that will come up to it and if you look over here this is your details panel your details panel is going to tell you information about what you're actually working with I don't want to rename you the variable type is a boolean and it's going to be yes or no so first off you don't see anything here it says please compile the blueprint so you hit the compile button if I say compile and save, do them both. If you're going to compile, go ahead and hit save also. I'll also sometimes call it compost, but compost and save. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to do one, do both. So now you can see you have a default value for your variable. And since this is a yes or no, it's going to be checked or unchecked. Um, and that's what a Boolean does. You can change the variable type. You've got byte. It's an 8-bit number. I almost never use it. 
you have an integer, it's a whole number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. A float is used pretty common for a lot of things, and a float is a what is, is a floating point number. Basically that means it can have a decimal point, like 25.3468, whatever. You can have stuff behind the decimal point. Whereas an integer is a whole number only, no decimal point. Name, well, it's, it's a text-based name. String can be, you know, all sorts of name functions, strings, data, basic um, text information. Or text is just that, it is text. Usually when applying things like to a print text item or something of that nature, so it'll print something on the screen, you can give a text value for a name of something and that kind of stuff. A vector is going to be your XYZ coordinates of a location. Rotator is, well, you know, the rotation of that um, item you're working with. Transform is going to include both a vector and rotator and scale. Structure. You will learn about structures. They're awesome. Use them. Love them. Enumerators, same thing, object types, interface, but this is the main portion of what you're going to be using. When you get into using structures, you're going to find them quite handy. So if you don't know, if you want to add something that you don't see right there, like, oh, skeletal mesh. Um, well, there, skeletal mesh object reference. Um, that's one I use quite a bit, or um, a static mesh reference, like static mesh. You don't have to worry about putting in spaces. So there, static mesh, object reference, I use that quite a bit. Um, if you don't know what you're looking for, just start typing. Material, okay, well I want a material, object reference, I use that one quite a bit. So that's your details panel over here. It's going to give you your details about what your variable is or what you've got over here or whatever else. Look in your details panel. It's going to give you information, especially if you're trying to replicate something. Like, okay, I clicked on my player base. I'm going to look down. I want to make sure this is a replicated deal. So I'm going to look through here and replicates is yes. Capsule component, is it replicated? I'll scroll through. Oh, well, let's turn that on. Component replicates. Arrow component, who cares? Mesh, you will use arrows quite a bit also. And scene components. But our mesh, we also want to go ahead and make sure that component regular uh, rep replicates. Camera boom. I'm going to say yes on that as well. Because you're going to use that basic system later on, whether you know it or not. So compost and save and that's it common ones to use up here is compile save class settings and class defaults I don't use anything else in here I don't use that play or simulation or anything else construction script you got tabs here event graph if I say go to your event graph it's here this is where all your blueprint items are going to go into for controlling what you're trying to do construction script I very seldom use, but sometimes you do need to use it. Viewport. Go to Viewport. Okay, here's your Viewport. Right click to move your mouse and WASD to fly around the environment to look at your character. You can see our character is animated. You can also see that our capsule component is taller than our head. Uh, but, yeah, that's your Viewport. Go back to your Event Graph. Viewport, Event Graph. So that's the basics of the anatomy of a blueprint. Doing the compile and save is just as important there as doing save all here. So that's the basics and the basic anatomy of the actual editor itself and getting started and getting an idea. If I say go into your third person blueprint, get used to your your folder structure that you're generating here and here so that you can keep organized with everything. Go into your player character. Okay? Character. Blueprint. And there it is. That's my player character. Well, look back at your third person character. 
well we saved it it's in our third person blueprint and our blueprints folder and there is that at some point I will take this information like this third person game mode and I'm gonna create my own version of it and everything else and I'll have my own folder sequence so that is that that is the basic anatomy of the editor in a nutshell if anybody has any questions on that I wanted this video to be primarily just the anatomy lesson of what we're looking at so you have a basic idea of the anatomy of blueprints of the editor window look in your components tab okay it's right there look in your blueprints tab right here details panel over here on the right look in your event graph it's right here look in your viewport it's right there so if I'm saying or if you're trying to figure out where things are and you're asking me well just look in your event graph what does it say well you see all these things right here the the, the little comments popped up see I did this right here I created this little bit of blueprint scripting then I just left click and drag and I can select all of it so now I can have control to move it around but while I've also got it all selected I can hit the C key C as in Charlie and it will throw a comment block around it and I can say begin play stuff and if I want this to be bigger you know I'm like okay whatever if I want to move this whole block around I can grab this section right here and I can move this whole window around now. I don't have to highlight anything. But also, while I have it selected, you can look over here in your details panel. Well, you can change the description here. You can also change the color, which I'm going to do. You can change the font size. I want this to be 25, so it's bigger text. I want to know for sure that I can see this thing always. Um, another, The other important thing here is the um, color bubble but I don't use that very often I do the comment color I can click on this it's gonna bring up my color picker now a good thing about the color picker is I want this to be red so red one hit tab I don't want any green tint so I change that to zero I don't want any blue tint I change that to zero and now I've created a perfect red it's red one green zero blue zero now I want to save this color I'm gonna use this red color again so I'm gonna left click and drag the old color or the new color right here into here and now I can save it so I'm gonna click OK and there we go now I'm not gonna leave this from red and reason for that is as I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll out if I'm looking for anything that does damage receive damage damage stuff dangerous stuff I want it to be red so I can like okay there's red so that must be damage related stuff so I'm not gonna leave this red because this doesn't have anything to do with damage so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on here I'm gonna go back in and okay um, let's give it a green color because it's administrative data so I can come back in here if I want to and I can I can click around the bubble to get the color that I want but I just want a straight green so I'm gonna do zero here one here and zero here it's gonna give me a pure green and again I'm gonna left click drag it over here and now I'm saving this color for later another thing here this is an input now I like to make sure that I have plenty of room for everything so there's some overlap on it so if this is touch input and I'm not going to use it at all so I don't like it so I'm going to left click and drag all the way across the entire touch input thing I don't want it I don't need it it's not going to affect anything for me so I got rid of it um, mouse input and jump we need these so these are movement related so I tend to use yellow for movement so I'm gonna click here on the color and I'm gonna select a yellow color and there's a bunch of different ways you can create this manually if you want to so let's try 0 0.75 0 0.75 and 0.75 and what did that create well you know what I don't want that I don't 
like that. So let's leave red. Yeah, oh, that's good enough. So I'll just drag that up here and I'll save my, my yellow color. So now when I go to my mouse input, it's a movement related. So I can go over here, click yellow and save. Movement input, that's movement related. So yellow. Um, gamepad input. I'm not using a gamepad. I'm old. I'm finicky. I want everybody in the PC master race to use a damn keyboard and mouse. So you my games, screw you. Use it. I'm deleting that. And oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Control Z will let me undo it because it deleted that as well. So I want to make sure that I got plenty of room. Right click to hold and drag around your blueprint. So I'm just going to go in here and select all that and delete. I don't need VR stuff. Delete. And the only thing that I'm left with is just this. So this for me is a basic setup blueprint. This is all that I need to get everything to work the way that I need it to work. And you can organize it however you want to, but I recommend having inputs by itself and then your greens we're going to be you know we're going to be racist we're going to segregate our yellow guys from our green guys from our red guys from our blue guys blue is what i usually use for view blue view so there we go now that way we can start getting organized in our blueprint so if we scroll out we want movement related stuff we know it's yellow so i can scroll in and look at my yellow stuff I can't stress how important it is to get organized, stay organized, and keep up after yourself for organization. The more organized you start becoming, the better it is for you later down the line. Whenever something breaks and you want to figure it out, you know that if it's movement related, it's going to be a certain color. You pick your own colors. It's just like your nose, man. It's your nose. You can pick it however you want. So <laughs> there we go. That's getting set up and compost and save, compost and save. Do it as often as you can. Make a change, save it. If you're going to save it, compile it. So if you're going to compile it, save it. So just get to have it bang, bang, and then go back to what you're doing. So I think that's going to conclude this video, which is the basic training of the anatomy of Unreal Engine 4. And for those of you who are watching live and you want to keep up with what's going on, I'm going to take a 10 minute break and I'm going to come back, which it's going to be 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will pick up with phase two and we'll start talking about BSB geometries. I've covered this before, but I want to get a good fresh start for everybody on this again. So we're all on the same table on BSB geometries. They're fun to play with, so we'll do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a 10 minute break and we're going to come back to this very same project and go from here. And I want to thank everybody that watched, and please check in on my Discord channel. Also, hit that um, subscribe button, and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in 10 minutes.